So we're really excited about the near-term prospects for frontier markets, though we would caution that investor scrutiny will be as important as ever in 2019, and we continue to recommend a very targeted approach. Now at its heart, frontier markets are about domestic reform to unlock growth potential, and that makes the risk in frontier markets very idiosyncratic. For example, we're really excited about the potential for social, economic and capital markets reform in Saudi Arabia, or by the post-IMF structural growth story unfolding in Egypt, and of course, by the prospects in Colombia under a relatively new business-minded administration. Now, in our view, valuations remain undemanding in a global context. Frontier markets traded about 11 times earnings, and we find this quite appealing in the context of a 15% expected earnings CAGR over the next three years. Finally, whilst investor positioning in frontier markets is at multi-year lows, we're starting to see signs of recovery. And so as conventional emerging markets mature and move up the value chain, we expect investment opportunities in these less developed markets to receive both growing attention and investor flows. So our very clear preference is to be in domestically driven stories with high structural growth rates that we transform positively by government policy to unlock their potential. Consumer staples, consumer discretionary, and healthcare all fall into this category. What's key to us is really the sustainability of earnings. We're targeting companies with high quality franchises that can grow. Some of the typical characteristics we look for include very low product penetration or cross-cycle demand resilience. In general, we're more cautious on sectors such as real estate and utilities, given their sensitivity to rates, and on materials, because supply pressure in an uncertain global demand environment really gives us less conviction in the underlying sustainability of those earnings. Frontier asset class comes with its own set of risks, of which I'd highlight three. Firstly, an economy's ability to sustainably generate growth really relies on the quality of its institutions. And it's in this regard, by and large, where frontier countries score quite poorly. Recent evidence includes renationalization in both Argentina and Sri Lanka within the last decade. Secondly, challenges arise from the ease of doing business in frontier markets. Now, in our view, Bangladesh, Nigeria, and Kenya rank among the most challenging places to conduct business. Finally, I'd say market access and elevated transaction costs also present challenges for investors wishing to gain access to these markets, as do the numerous examples of restrictive foreign exchange controls. But in truth, these risks also form part of the opportunity, and that is the opportunity to pick between losers and winners. The Franklin Templeton Emerging Market Equity Team comprises over 80 investment professionals spread across 20 different offices. The investment teams come with a deep understanding of local markets in which they both live in and invest in. And the research analysts are typically native to that region and speak the language and understand the culture. We think that makes the team well equipped to identify both local risks and opportunities. Now, at the same time, the business shares in the firm's global quality standards and infrastructure for trading, compliance, risk management, and client servicing. And we think that operating model is particularly suited to markets as complex and under-researched as Frontier. It gives us a real competitive edge through better access to information, higher quality insights, and robust risk management.